Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lonnie G. Bunch III, Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. Kim Sayet, Director of the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery. <laughs> Rhea Combs, Director of the Curatorial Affairs at the National Portrait Gallery. Sean Michael Warren, portrait artist. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. after all. My name is Kim Sayet and I am the director of the National Portrait Gallery and on behalf of the entire Smithsonian I want to welcome you to the celebration of Oprah Winfrey, the reveal of her portrait and the introduction of artist Sean Michael Warren. You know, it was precisely for moments such as this that Congress founded the National Portrait Gallery in 1962 to tell the stories of remarkable individuals who have made significant contributions to US history and culture through the skill of the nation's most accomplished artists. A museum where art and biography come together to tell the American story. Ironically, however, given our focus on portraiture, it's not what you look like that matters, it's what you do that counts. Which is why I love to quote Oprah Winfrey, who said, quote, no matter who we are, or what we look like, or what we may believe, it is both possible and more importantly, it becomes powerful to come together in common purpose and common effect. The Smithsonian was founded for the increase and diffusion of knowledge because we know that only by coming together to solve our most urgent problems will we create a better shared future. And, by the way, portraiture is powerful because it reminds us that, that it's people who are the ones that must lead that change. To that end, I want to thank the people who helped bring this commission portrait into the light. Tommy Pegas and Don Kaposha, Taylor and Wamimo Abe, Dion Jones and Cameron Ross, Lisa Opoku and Loki Muthu, Mac Wilborn, Charles Young and Andrea Wisham Young, and Marion Lynn and Elisha Weisel. Appreciation is, thank you, thank you very much. Appreciation is also ex extended to our commissioners, Lyndon Barawa and Nicole Washington, and Dr. Rhea Combs, our Director of Curatorial Affairs, who, will, who worked with Sean on the commission, who you'll be hearing from shortly, and of course the museum's dedicated staff. So it's now my great pleasure to welcome to the podium Dr. Lonnie Bunch, an author, leading historian, the founding director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and the 14th Secretary of the Smithsonian, who once said that museums like ours, quote, have an obligation to use their expertise, their platform, to contribute to the greater good of a nation. Lani, the podium is yours.
Thank you, Kim. I am so excited and I'm so pleased that you're all here to share this amazing moment as we celebrate a cultural icon whose life, whose work, whose generosity, and whose commitment to freedom and fairness has helped to shape this nation. Oprah's impact on America and on the world is wide and deep. In fact, I thought this morning that I was going to make a list of all the things Oprah does and of all the people she's touched, <laughs> but I ran out of paper. I'm old school, right? Um, but what I realized is that Oprah has never run out of ideas, nor has she ever tempered her commitment to use her creativity to make us all better. Oprah came of age during the Civil Rights Movement and during a period of changing media landscape, both of which shaped who she became. Oprah used television as a tool to help change the country. Her shows promoted literacy through her book clubs, enabled important cultural and personal conversations, and inspired generations of young women and people of color to change the world they live in. And she used her platform, for me as a historian, she used her platform to illustrate stories and peoples who deserve to be remembered and whose stories deserve to be honored. Using television as her springboard, Oprah expanded her reach to film, to publishing, to philanthropy, through all of which she has given voice to so many. But more importantly, I think what Oprah has helped us do is she helped America understand who we are today, but more importantly, she pointed America towards what she can become. So let me conclude by personally thanking Oprah, because I have to be honest, I'm secretary because I was director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and the, Af the National Museum of African American History and Culture was successful partly because of Oprah. Um, <laughs> so thank you for my job. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> oh, my daughters, thank you. Um, you know, you may not remember, but from the very moment I became secretary, you took time with me. We got together and we talked about the importance of audience, to know your audience, to respect your audience. You spent a lot of time talking to me about storytelling, about how to make sure that you're able to engage a variety of people in a new museum. And maybe most importantly, you taught me, you stressed the importance that this museum, a museum of history, has to be as much about today and tomorrow as it is about the past. So I could not be more pleased, more honored, more humbled, to be the secretary of the Smithsonian that welcomes your portrait into the collections of the National Portrait Gallery. I love that. <laughs> Being part of the Smithsonian means that you are permanently remembered, and it's an honor that not everybody gets, but it's an honor well-deserved. So we are, we the country, are in your debt, Oprah, and we're so pleased to be able to celebrate you with this moment. Congratulations. Good morning, everyone. It is an honor to be here. Um, I am Rhea Combs, the Director of Curatorial Affairs at the National Portrait Gallery. What a treat to have each of you here this morning. Throughout history, there are things that bind us together, and I feel like this is one of those moments, because this special occasion in many ways feels incredibly unique while simultaneously full circle. Full circle because I had the unique opportunity several years ago to co-curate co an exhibition on Oprah Winfrey for the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture. Combing through archives, I found images of Miss Winfrey at various stages of her life, growing up in rural Mississippi, her formative years attending cotillions and participating in Miss Black Tennessee pageants, as well as during her early career in radio and eventually moving to television and films. Reflecting upon those various images of Miss Winfrey um, and now standing here with this portrait of an incredibly accomplished and highly respected woman 
entering the permanent collection of the National Portrait Gallery alongside other cultural change agents, world leaders, and titans of industry feels incredibly momentous. It is also deeply significant because this moment highlights the hard work of Chicago-based artist Sean Michael Warren. He, like many of us, grew up watching The Oprah Winfrey Show, a show that was filmed in Chicago for more than two and a half decades. Sean's commitment to his craft, coupled with the tremendous support from his family and friends throughout the years, especially, most especially, his dedicated mother, Sherry Perkin. Has, has made this full circle moment come together. And so I am so proud to welcome you both to our museum and our city. I want to acknowledge a special thank you from the mayor of Washington, D.C., Muriel Bowser, uh, on your accomplishments, Sean. And now, may I ask that Sean Michael Warren and Ms. Oprah Winfrey come forward to unveil the portrait. I haven't seen it, okay? <laughs> I have not seen it. And for those that kept asking, no, she did. I have never seen it. I've never seen it. Good morning, everyone. Ah, uh, wow. Ah, uh, let me breathe this in for 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 a moment. All right, all right. <laughs> it's an honor to be here amongst you all today. Uh, it's not overselling to, to acknowledge that this there's just a lifetime of things I could say right now, but for the time that I do have, I do want to extend my gratitude to a few people. Miss Winfrey. My friend and my muse, I am tremendously humbled to have been your choice to take on the task of capturing your likeness and essence for a purpose that will outlive both you and I. When you and I had our first conversation two and a half years ago, I asked you something that caused you to pause and ponder. How did you want to be depicted to the generations that don't exist yet? I thank you for being sensitive and aware of the enormity of this endeavor and letting that question resonate with you. It's been a pleasure adding your portrait to this institution and to the canon of art history and the long-standing tradition of the art of portraiture. You could have chosen anyone. But you saw fit that an artist from the place you called home during your rise to prominence should be given this honor. Thank you for your kindness, your trust, your playfulness, welcoming us into your home, and allowing us to capture your portrait in your most sacred space, your prayer garden, which is what you see in the background. Thank you for the unexpected phone calls even, to check in and see how I was doing. <laughs> and for reminding me that it's okay to loosen up a bit. I was in serious work mode that day and she got me to loosen up, so I'm just, yeah. <laughs> so from the mural in 2020 to this portrait you see before you today, is the completed arc of a true Chicago story. To Darius Carter, my friend, my brother, my fellow artist, you are a godsend. And I'm thankful for the day Nidra broadly approached you at that Grammy party and said, you look like somebody we should know. <laughs> Thank you for being a part of my journey and allowing me to take part in yours. It's not the easiest, I'm not the easiest artist to understand 
but you have clearly been an extension of my creative mind. You know what to do, how to do it, and you perform with the highest level of excellence every time. Thank you for lending your gift with the lens for this endeavor. You are my brother for life, and I look forward to our many more adventures in the arts. To my team, Flex Omar, Nidra Simpson, Andrew McDonald, Joe Bracado, Khalil Ayed, Steve Westerberg, thank you for being the X factor in my life, in my career, and in my journey. Thank you for your belief in me, your brilliance, your leadership, your gifts, and most importantly, your protection. You have each steered me on a path that has been life-changing, and I'm forever grateful for you all. To my village, Sapphire, Anthony, Roy, Kenneth, Melissa, Aaron, Sean, Cleveland, Nache, Darius, Stevie, Husna, Nidra, Paul, Miko, Robbie, Kobe, Michelle, Greg. I would not be here today without your love, your prayers, and your support. To my newcomers, my newcomers, Tommy and, Tommy and Don, Logan, Anu, Monica, Vinoda, Lawrence, Joe, Lauren, I'm grateful for each of you being an integral part of my life and career. The most gratifying thing about this moment is being able to share it with each of you. Mom. <laughs> my angel. Thank you for seeing the gift in your son from the very beginning and for having the presence of mind to foster your son's fascination with the craft that was seen as unusual. And you created a space where he could explore, experiment, learn, grow, and advance as a young artist with your unconditional love, your countless encouraging prayers, and unrelenting support. I am honored to be your son. Pops? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting you too. <laughs> I honor you for your guidance, your discipline, your hard lessons about life that would help your son navigate a complicated world and would serve as an example on how to be a gentleman. I mean, you see how he's dressed, so I get it from him. Um, <laughs> but how to look a person in the eye when you shake their hand, how to defend oneself, how to fight when absolutely necessary, and how even though life isn't always fair, when the opportunity presents itself, be prepared to put your best foot forward. These are tools I will continue to carry with me for the rest of my life. To the National Portrait Gallery, I thank you all for taking a relatively obscure artist and entrusting him with the task of capturing one of the world's most iconic women. To Rhea Combs, thank you for being a guide throughout these two and a half years. Thank you for taking the reins and seeing this endeavor through to the end. It's been a long road to get here, but I'm grateful to see the end result of this journey. To Lonnie, Kim, the chairman, board members, commissioners, and donors. Thank you for being the arbiters of truth and, inst and an institution that covers all aspects of history and culture, the good and not so good. This is vital to telling the full narrative of our history and the individuals that have made a profound impact on our society. Thank you for being the cultural hub in which Ms. Winfrey and I deposit our contribution to art history and world history. I leave you with one request and that is continue to guide, protect, and foster meaningful relationships with artists. They are an essential part of chronicling the game changers and happenings of our society, and they possess the courage to speak out for those who have no voice. They represent the underrepresented, and they bring light to issues and events that shift the course of our society and future the world over. As Nina Simone once said, it is an artist's duty to reflect the times, and it is by your patronage and support that these stories and icons will live on throughout the halls of this institution. It is my hope that this portrait will cause future generations to become curious of the life, legacy, and philanthropic acts of Ms. Winfrey, and that it will inspire the next generation of leaders, givers, and pioneers to come. Lastly, I want to dedicate this moment to three muses that helped raise and influence my life that are no longer here. Sandra Jones, Ella B. Legs, and Clarissa Adams, three women I had the pleasure of calling grandmother during their time here on Earth. I am tremendously blessed to be a part of their legacy and to bring honor to their names on today. Thank you, and to God be the glory. <laughs> Glad that's over with. <laughs> So now, it is with great honor 
that I present to you one of the most influential and polarizing figures of our time. A pioneer in the arts and entertainment, a generous giver, and a woman who has been in our homes and lives for many years and can relate to many of us when it comes to the everyday challenges of life. A pillar in our culture, and now I'm proud to call my friend and muse. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Oprah Winfrey. Wow. Have a seat, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Ah, the color purple. Well, I have to say, um, thank you, Lonnie Bunch. Rhea, I love you so much. Thank you. We've been, you've, you know me. You have been through all my stuff. Thank you. Kim, thank you for making this day possible. I was walking through my house just last week and going from the kitchen into the dining room. And in the dining room, there's a bowed, like, French window. And I was looking out through that window, and I gasped because the view was so beautiful and the light was so perfect. I stepped back and did a rewind to do it again to make sure that I was really alive and breathing and I wasn't just in a dream. And then I did it again. And I recalled my favorite Bible verse in that moment, Acts 17, 28. In God, I move and breathe and have my being. And I thought, I am moving and breathing in the space that is God right now. And I am living in this dream that God had for me. Because I don't know how I got from Mississippi to Montecito <laughs> with that view. And so I've known for a long time, since standing on the back porch, watching my grandmother, Hattie Mae, boil the clothes in a big iron pot that we had because no running water, no electricity. And watching her say to me, Oprah Gail, you better pay attention now because one day you're going to have to learn how to do this for yourself. And inside my spirit, I knew, no, Grandmama, that is not going to be me. That ain't me. But I had sense enough to keep that to myself. And I just said, yes, ma'am. I could feel inside my being when I was very young, I think as early as four, when I first started speaking in the church, that's where my broadcasting career began, with Jesus rose on Easter day, hallelujah, hallelujah, all the angels did proclaim. Y'all remember when we used to get Easter pieces? Because it'd be just like a little piece because you couldn't get the whole thing. And I could feel that there was something inside me. I could hear that still small voice and I started to pay attention to it at a very young age, and that still small voice has led me to this day. And I can tell you that I learned to lean into it and to understand that God can dream a bigger dream for you than you can ever dream for yourself. Because of all the dreams that I had, I didn't even know there was a National Gallery. <laughs> I didn't know there was a national gallery to dream and aspire to and for. And so I am living and breathing God's dream for me this day. That is what has happened. And I thank you all for it. Uh, the opportunity that I received to do the Oprah Winfrey show, to share stories over 25 years and to share them with an audience and to be able to have literally my therapy sessions with the world uh, was a gift to me. And through the show, we created a safe space for audiences all over the world 
to see themselves. And then we launched this thing called a book club back in 1996 when everybody told me that it, it, it couldn't work. And 103 book club selections later, it's still actually working. Um, I have to say, I keep living God's dream for me. And so as I stand here on the eve of my 70th birthday, to have a portrait included in the National Portrait Gallery alongside all the greats. Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Abraham Lincoln and Ida B. Wells, Michelle and Barack Obama, Lena Horne, John F. Kennedy, Oprah Winfrey. I chose to wear the color purple, not just because I knew the movie was coming out. <laughs> Two years ago. I chose to wear the color purple because for me, that color has been seminal in my life. So now I get to stand in the space of reimagining this film with Blitz Badzwole, who is our fantastic director, <laughs> Scott Sanders, who had the idea to take the color purple and make it into a Broadway show. I said, how are you gonna do a Broadway show? Was Celie gonna be singing and sweeping at the same time? And she actually is. So Scott and Steven Spielberg and Quincy Jones and I reimagined the film and it's coming out and it's wonderful and I do hope you all go to see it on Christmas Day. But it's, it's get your tickets now. Um, <laughs> but it's not just because I was in a movie that the color purple represents so much for me. You know, in the film, Suge says to Celie, you know, God get pissed if he see you pass in a field with the color purple and you don't notice it. Well, in fact, the color purple and noticing it to me is the essence of what God represents. The complications of making the color purple and the simplicity. And that role in that movie that I wanted more than anything else in my life served as a foundation for my future because when I received the opportunity to do The Color Purple, my bosses at the time said, you only have two weeks to get this film done. And I needed two months. So I said, I will give up all of my vacation for the remainder of my contract in order to do it. I will not take a vacation, a sick day, or a holiday again until the contract is over. And when the show started to be successful. My attorney at the time, Jeff Jacobs, said, you never want to be in that position again. You want to be in a position where you own yourself and nobody tells you that you can or cannot go and shoot a film. And it's because of the color purple that I said, yes, I will take the risk of owning myself. <laughs> and that decision changed everything. So the color purple is a, is, is a foundation for me for all that it means in the story that Alice Walker wrote, but all that it has meant in my life. The ability to surrender and to know when you've done all that you can do, you give it to God. To know that hope and forgiveness continues to live and is needed no matter what, no matter how much AI, no matter how much technology, no matter how, how much social media, hope and forgiveness and love. And so I feel so blessed to be able to pass the torch to this next generation that will carry that story forward. But more importantly, it continues to live in me. When Maya was here on earth, she taught me so much. And for my 50th birthday, she wrote a poem called Continue. I'm not going to do the whole poem. Y'all can Google it. 
But one of my favorite lines she says in the poem is that I hope you continue to astonish a mean world with your acts of kindness. And I hope that gratitude will be the pillow on which you kneel every night. And I want you to know that that is exactly what I intend to do, to continue to astonish a mean world with my acts of kindness and continue to live in the space of gratitude and move and have my being in all of that which is God. To God be the glory. Thank you. So thank you so much for coming this morning. That concludes the remarks. If I could ask our guests on the stage, Miss Winfrey and Lonnie and Sean and Rhea to come and stand near the portrait and I can invite the press to come and take pictures. Um, and
like yes. Sorry, that email. What did they want? Yeah. Good to see you, Jeff. Be free after the bag. Pullman.
put a commemorative print in it.
come in a little bit. There you go. And thank you, Ms. Winter. One, two, three. There we go. One more. One, two, three. And there it is. Perfect. Thank you.
And then we'll we'll ask. Everybody, this is Latoya representing um, Mayor Mural Bowser. I'm going to bestow the proclamation to Sean. Can I read, can I read it all that? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. All right, Sean. Right. What a day. What a day. Sean, 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 Sean. On behalf of Mayor Bowser of Washington, D.C., I am pleased to offer hearty congratulations to Sean Michael Warren on your National Portrait Gallery unveiling, as well as others who offer thanks for your significant contributions to our city's visual and fine arts landscape. Born a native of Chicago, Illinois, your work as a painter and muralist has impacted the world of fine art immensely. As a young artist, you studied at the American Academy of Art and would soon be accepted into an intensive drawing program with the Florence Academy of Art. The program influenced you a great deal, helping to further develop your skills as a well-rounded artist. As an established painter, you held firmly to your philosophy of art as a necessary medium and a service to your community, which is evident throughout your remarkable narrative paintings and portraits. I am grateful for your new, unique, realistic portrayals of notable African-American icons, as well as your distinct, intentional depictions of the black experience, including the stories of the African diaspora, the Great Migration, and of community tragedies such as the Flint Water Crisis. Your work reflects the most raw and human parts of us all and seeks to educate and connect with people on a deeper level. Today's unveiling promises the exact same impact. Your gift to the National Portrait Gallery not only honors Oprah Winfrey's legacy as one of the most influential African American women in the world, but also represents a noble merging of art and history. While well, someone is coming out here, if you can. Okay. In the courtyard. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh yeah. Thank you. you can follow me. Anyways, the pandemic came in. We were engaged going into the pandemic and then we got married. 